The Department of Basic Education has added coding and robotics to the subject roster for grades R to 9 in schools. It comes after the gazetting of changes to the national policy pertaining to the program and promotion requirements. Grades R to 12. Maths, Science and Technology at the Department of Basic Education Chief Director Saliki Trabane joins us now for more. Dr. Trabane, very good evening to you. Thanks very much um, for your time. A bit of background, um, uh, if you will, to how this uh, came about. Um, thank you very much, Vuyo, for the opportunity um, that you're giving us as basic education uh, to speak to the country. Let me just make the first correction. Um, I am Mr. Trabani and not Dr. Trabani. So I thought, let me not uh, uh, allow <laughs> that uh, to continue without uh, uh, correcting thank you for... it. Otherwise, I'll be claiming something I'm not. Thank you for that. But thank you very much for, for the opportunity. and. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Th thank you very much for the opportunity, Vuyo. Um, the, it, it is the responsibility of every government through its Department of Education uh, to provide education to its citizens. And uh, every education system on a continuous basis um, take a reflection of whether the curriculum that they are offering uh, is still relevant, one, two, uh, is it responding to the demands of the world of work and uh, we, we took a decision uh, recently taking uh, note of the changing world and the demands of um, the world of work, and that South Africans need to be equipped with skills that are going to um, make them function effect effectively in society. And those skills that are in demand at the moment are what we call digital skills. And uh, we introduce in this subject for the purpose that we equip our learners with skills and competencies that are going to make them to function effectively in society. We are excited that we have come a long way when we started writing this curriculum. It's a process that started way back in 2020. And we are at the point where we have completed the process and our quality assurance body, which is Umalusi, has approved that curriculum and we are in the process of now promulgating. Um, this is in response to the demands for the changing world, and we are excited that South Africa is the first country in Africa uh, to introduce coding and robotics as an official subject for promotion purposes. There are other countries that are exposing learners to coding programs, but this is as a core curricula or extracurricular activity. We are preparing our children to take up the opportunities there. The profile of the worker of the future is changing rapidly, and it is for that reason that we need to position ourselves in such a way that our learners are equipped with those type of skills that they are going to need to function effectively in society. First of all, do you have the teachers, but also the facilities that will enable this? Um, we, we started uh, uh, two years ago to start preparing teachers uh, who are going to teach this subject. Um, we started through what you call a pilot project, where we were piloting this project in 1,700 schools across all, pro across all nine um, uh, provinces. And in partnership with UNISA, we trained teachers. And uh, we went on to train further teachers through our teacher union collaboration. Our teachers have been on, our teacher unions have been on the forefront of ensuring that our teachers are prepared to take up this new responsibility. We have embarked on the process of resourcing our schools. But what we want to indicate is that for grade R to three, which we, we will be facing in first, we will be adopting an approach which we call unplugged. Unplugged is where schools are resourced with basic resources 
that are going to enable them to teach this subject. We have set a special grant, uh, which we call the Med Science and Technology Conditional Grant, that we are using to resource our schools. Yes, it is not all schools that are going to be ready, but schools are going to apply to participate in implementation of this new subject as soon as they are ready and they have uh, been supplied with the necessary resources. We know, I mean, the equipment that they would have to use or the environment within which this has to happen um, uh, is often, I mean, especially in the townships where schools are not well uh, looked after, you get uh, facilities uh, vandalized and, and, and the like. Uh, any of the equipment and facilities that you are putting in place that could be uh, at risk, especially um, in, 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 in township uh, schools? You, you are correct, Vuyo. Um, crime is a, is, a, is a challenge for the entire society, including um, our schooling. Um, uh, communities and facilities. Uh, we do have, um, you know, unlawful citizens who break into schools and uh, take the most valuable resources uh, away. But we have made a decision as government that we will not allow um, uh, thieves and uh, those who uh, break into our schools stop us from forging I had to provide times they break in and they take them. We work with law enforcement agents. We work with communities. We work with SGBs to ensure that the resources that we provide are safeguarded. We succeed sometimes. Sometimes we do not succeed. But we will not be deterred by thieves to provide quality education to our children. And we, we are grateful to the law enforcement agents who come to the party to ensure that our schools are secured. In instances where these are vandalized, some of them we are able to recover them. But it is a problem that we are living with uh, as, as South Africa, and uh, these resources are placed in the hands of communities. And that we make a plea uh, to our communities that the resources that are provided by government, that they must be taken care of. We win sometimes, we are, sometimes we don't. But we are determined that we will not be held back by those who are determined to break the law. Now, you did mention that, um, I mean, this, this is about the future. These are uh, skills and competencies of the future. This is what... Um, you know, the world demands. And we are the first African nation to, um, to do this. You know this, um, that uh, often our education system in its entirety, um, basic education in particular, um, often comes under criticism for what other people see as a lowering of standards. What have you done or what are you doing to ensure that um, uh, I mean, this curriculum that you are, you are introducing uh, doesn't really fall into that trap. Um, we are, there's a lot of misinformation um, that is taking place um, uh, in, in South Africa and that we um, seldom appreciate uh, what we are doing and who we are as a nation. What we do is that the curriculum, when it's written, it is quality assured by Umalusi, which is a world-class quality assuring body. Um, Umalusi recently conducted a benchmark, a benchmark assessment of our curricula. They compared it to curricula um, with the British curricula, with the Zimbabwean curricula, with the Kenyan curricula, and other curricula in the world. Our curricula was found to be uh, in par with some of the best curricula in the world. So sometimes when people talk about lowering of standards, 
It would be best if they give themselves time to go through these reports that we are respected more out there in the world than we respect ourselves as, as a country. You know, I, I mean, you and, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm no expert in this, but you hear people often talking about, uh, for instance, how low, like, pass marks, um, you know, that are often permissible um, are what um, give that impression to people that we are not quiet or we don't strive for um, to be the best of the best. Yes, they, they would have their own reasons why um, they say that, Vuyo. And uh, definitely, um, the point that you are raising, we are aware of, where people are questioning, um, you know, the pass requirement at 30% uh, at FET level. But what we don't say is that at this level, that the pass requirement for this subject is 40%. And that is not just for this subject, but all subjects that are at GET level, meaning in our primary schooling level, the pass requirement for a subject is 40%. But what we are inviting the nation to do, that they must continue to hold us accountable and that we are accountable to them and we welcome that. South Africa has a vibrant democracy where the general society hold government accountable. And we welcome that voyo. But we would like to make a plea that what the debate that we must be having should be centered around whether what we are teaching is below standard or not. And that if our curriculum, as you say, sometimes is pointed to as being uh, below par, those who are researchers in these areas must provide evidence of what they are saying because we benchmark uh, with other education systems across the world. I mentioned the Zimbabwean, the Ghanaian, the Kenyan, the British, that we do benchmark assessments all the time, and that we do this with the purpose of checking whether what we are offering our children is below standard or not. Now, just from the pilot projects that you've already um, conducted, what are they telling you about how soon or uh, how far you can go um, I mean, with, 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 um, uh, with, with, with expansion to your grades, all the way to your grade 12? Yeah, the curriculum uh, has been um, developed to cater for grade R up to grade 9. And that is by design, because in grade 10 to grade 12, we've got subjects like information technology. We've got a uh, subject like EGD. And these are the subjects that coding and robotics is going to articulate into. When children get into grade 10 to 12, there are subjects that we already have there that children will be writing. So the intention at this point is not to take this subject and take it all the way to grade 12, because we've got subjects already at that level that learners would be able to take. So, so what then, I mean, to a parent um, who is, is watching this, what uh, will what uh, you are introducing help children do? In what very specific areas can they go with the knowledge that they will have accumulated um, um, with what you are you are introducing or from um, Vuyo, the, the the new jobs that are emerging that are technology based require um, deep knowledge of digital skills and the competencies that are uh, requisite. Um, the de uh, app, app developers, for instance, um, who do coding uh, of machines, we know that um, the world of work is automated and that a lot of industries are using machines and that these machines need to be built, these machines need to be programmed, 
and these machines um, or, or some of these functions need to be automated. So children would be able to do jobs that require somebody to become programmers, uh, app developers, uh, the, the technologies that you and I are talking through right now, the Zooms, the Teams, um, and, and all these virtual platforms, they need people who will build them. They need people who will maintain them. And these are the things that we are trying to address so that we don't have to import these people in future, that they must be able to take up these jobs. And presumably, uh, studies have been done that these jobs um, uh, are here to last. These are not uh, bubbles, you know, uh, that may disappear tomorrow. And I'm asking this um, on the back of, I mean, uh, when, when I was growing up, I didn't know that a medical doctor, you know, uh, could be out of work. Um, yes, you are right, uh, Vuyo. The world of work is continuously evolving. And it is for that reason that uh, we must try to keep up with the speed of change and ensure that we do not just produce children who will not fit in the job market. The, the world is changing all the time. Um, for what we are saying is that the, the, these jobs, an example that you just gave now of a doctor, the, 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 the need for doctors will always be there. What is changing is how doctors do their work, how they diagnose you, how they um, uh, use technology to conduct surgery. The, the theaters are changing and how that is happening. It's important that we must then produce doctors who will be able to operate in a digital era. Broadcasters have always been there, Broadcast like, broadcasters like yourself. But a broadcaster who was there 15 years ago would not be able to operate the way that you operate Vuyo now, the type of technology that you use to ensure that you reach to all of us. Uh, they, they would not be able to do that. Broadcasting is always there, but it is evolving. We have moved from analog, we are now in digital and that you need broadcasters who are able to operate in this space. Teachers will always be there, but we need teachers who will be able to use technology and operate within a digital environment. Doctors will always be needed, but they must be able to adapt to the demands that come with the changing world and the demands that are placed on every profession. Mr. Tawane, let's leave it there for tonight. Thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it. He's the Chief Director, Maths, Science and Technology at the Department of Basic Education. They've added new subject um, to the school curriculum. Uh, it involves piloting, uh, I mean, it involves coding and robotics, which says, of course, are digital skills and competences of the future.